Thank you for inviting me to speak today. شكراً لأنه uh, عزمتوني إنه أتكلم اليوم. Uh, yesterday we got to see the cedars of Lebanon. امبارح طلعنا وشفنا أرز لبنان. Milad was uh, our host yesterday with another professor. Milad كان هو مستضيفنا امبارح وكان معنا أستاذ آخر. And I thank you for lending him to us for one day. وشكراً لأنه أعطونا إياه لنهار كامل. The, my dream came true. I saw the cedars of Lebanon. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a very beautiful country. I want to speak today on uh, what is truth and how do we know what is true. Let me give you an example. When I was living in Los Angeles, They would always call me for jury duty. كانوا دائما يطلبوا مني إنه روح تكون أحد المحلفين على هيئة المحكمة. And every time they called my name, they would choose me to be a juror. وكل مرة كانوا يروحوا يطلبوا وراي كانوا يختاروني تحت تكون أحد المحلفين. I must have an honest face. لابد إنه وجهي كان يوحي بثقة. But they would never call my wife. ولا بس ولا مرة بعتوا ورا مرتي. I'm not sure why. ما بعرف ليش. But one time they called me on a murder case. أحد المرات طلبوا مني إنه يكون أحد المحلفين بقضية قتل. And I had to decide if this man was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. وكان علي أن أقرر ما إذا كان هذا الشخص مذنب من دون أي شك. His life was in the hands of twelve jurors. كانت حياته بيد اتناعش من المحلفين. But I wasn't there at the murder scene. ولكن أنا لم أكن هناك في الوقت أو على المكان اللي حصلت في الجريمة. Even though the murder happened only two blocks away from my home. بالرغم من إنه هذه الجريمة حصلت فقط حوالي شارعين فقط بعيد عن بيتي. I wasn't there, but I had to make a decision if he was guilty or not guilty. أنا ما كنت هونيك ولكن كان مطلوب مني إنه أخذ قرار عما إذا كان هذا الشخص مذنب. أو غير مذنب. So how do you know what is true and not true? كيف تعرف أو كيف نعرف ما هو حق وما هو أو ما هو غير حق? And so I will come back to my end of the story after we go to John chapter 20. رح برجع على هيد القصة من بعد ما نقرأ مع بعضنا البعض يوحنا والصحاح 20. In John chapter 20 we have uh, four scenes. بيوحنا 20 في عنا أربع مشاهد. And we have the first scene. Mary is going to the tomb of Jesus. أول مشهد مريم راحت على قبر يسوع. She goes to the tomb early in the morning, and she sees the stone has been rolled away. ذهبت إلى القبر باكرا عند الصبح ورأت إنه هيدا الحجر أو الحجر اللي كان على الباب قد دحرج. She is the first to see the open and the empty tomb. كانت أول الأشخاص الذين رأوا القبر الفارغ والقبر المفتوح. She runs back and tells Simon Peter and the other apostles what has happened. تركض وبتخبر سمعان بطرس وتلاميذ الآخرين ماذا حدث. She says they have taken Jesus out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. بتقولن أخذوا يسوع من القبر ولا نعرف أين وضعوه. So Peter starts running to the tomb. بطرس يبدأ بالرقد إلى القبر. And John follows him. ويوحنا يتبعه. And Peter is a sprinter, and he gets tired. بطرس ملش بسرعة ركض وتعب شوي. But John is a distance runner. He keeps running. He passes Peter. ولكن يوحنا كان ما عم يركض شوي على مهله أكتر ولا بعد ما تعب بطرس سبقه. John gets to the tomb first, and he stops and he looks in. يوحنا بيوصل إلى القبر أولاً يتوقف خارج القبر يقف خارج القبر وينظر إلى الداخل. And then Peter. Is tired. He comes to the tomb and he rushes inside. Oh, Petrus, tired and rushed. He tired and goes to the tomb and digs in the sand. They look in and they see the wrappings of the body of Jesus lying in the tomb. Ah, they look in the tomb, in the inside, and they see that the wrappings of the body of Jesus are lying in the tomb. Ah, they look in the tomb, in the inside, and they see that the wrappings of the body of Jesus are lying in the tomb. Ah, they look in the tomb. Wrappings around the face are folded and rolled neatly on the side. بعدين بشوفوا ال ال الكفن اللي كان ملفوف في وجهه كان مطوي ومحطوط بشكل جيد إلى جانبا. And they believed. فأمنوا. 
Now, scene two. Al-Mashhad al-Thani. The disciples return back to their place. Al-Talamiz bi-irja'u ila makanhum. And Mary is still standing there. Wa Maryam tabqa fi dhalik al-makan and al-qabr. And she's weeping outside of the tomb. Wa kanat tabki kharij al-qabr. So Mary possibly had arrived a little later, but she she looks in the tomb and she sees two angels. So one is sitting at the foot and one is sitting at the head of where Jesus used or was lying before. The disciples didn't see these angels. Mary seems to be more perceptive to these spiritual things on this day. Whether the angels were there the whole time or they had uh, come after they had left, Mary sees these angels. And they say to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She says, they've taken away my Lord and we don't know where he is. And then when she had said this, she turned around and Jesus was standing there. She is so distressed, she doesn't know that it's Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She thinks he's the gardener. She says, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you've laid them, and then I will take him away. And then she hears a voice. She hears her name, Mary. She, she recognizes the voice immediately and she says, Raboni, teacher. And then she clings to him and will not let him go. Whether she's holding his feet or his hands, we don't know, but she's clinging to him. She becomes not only the first to see the empty tomb, but she becomes the first to see the resurrected body of Jesus. This is a great honor in a male-dominated world. She is the first to testify of the empty tomb and the resurrection. And Jesus gives her this privilege of being the first. But she is clinging to him and she won't let go. She said, he says, stop clinging to me for I am in the ascension mode. He is in this transition period from veiling his divine prerogatives, his powers in human flesh. He is in what? He is in this, uh, he is transitioning from hiding his okay, divine unveiling, unveiling powers, unveiling, okay, yes, unveiling. Right. Okay, so, هو في هذا المرحلة هيدي عمال يكشف عن قوته الإلهية اللي كانت مخباية في الجسد. He is returning to the glory that he had from the beginning. هو يعود إلى المجد الذي كان له قبل تأسيس العالم. It's not time to cling to him now. هذا ليس وقت لكي تتمسك به الآن. He says, I sent to the Father, to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Scene three. Mary Magdalene runs back to the disciples. And she tells them all that she has seen. And so that evening or that day, the first day of the week, Sunday. 
بهداك النهار أول يوم من الأسبوع الأحد. The doors are shut. The doors are locked. الأبواب مغلقة. For the fear of the Jews and the twelve disciples are there. The eleven disciples are there. وبسبب الخوف من اليهود وكانوا التلاميذ لحداش موجودين في الداخل. And then Jesus appears in this locked room. فيسوع ظهر في هذه الغرفة المقفلة. Somehow his resurrected body is able to enter the room, even though it's locked. شكل بآخر جسد الممجد جسد المقام استطاع أن يدخل إلى غرفة من دون ما يكون مفتوح. He says, "Peace to you." قالهم سلام لكم. And he showed them his hands and his side. وأراهم يديه وجنبه. And the disciples rejoiced because they had seen Jesus. وتلاميذ فرحوا جدا لأنهم رأوا يسوع. And Jesus says again, "Peace to you." بعدين مرة تانية بيقولون يسوع سلام لكم. The Father has sent me; I send you. كما أرسلني الآب أرسلكم أنا. And then he does an interesting thing. He breathes on them and says, "Receive the Holy Spirit." وبعدين بيعمل شغلة خاصة بي بينفخ عليهم بقول اقبلوا الروح القدس. This is different than the receiving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. طبعاً هذا يختلف عن حلول الروح القدس التي تم في يوم اللي اللي تم في يوم الخمسين. That is the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit on believers. Ah, Act One, Act One, X Two, X. Okay. ب ب ب بسفر أعمال الرسل حلول الروح القدس هو مكوث الروح القدس الدائم في المؤمنين. This is a Receiving of the Holy Spirit for testimony. لكن هنا هنا قبول الروح القدس للشهادة. They are to testify as Jesus testified of the Father. They will testify of Jesus. عليهم أن يشهدوا ليسوع كما أن يسوع شهد عن الآب. This is similar to Acts 16, where he says, "I will give you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter." John 16. John 16. هيدا مثل مثل المكان يلي بيحكي فيه يسوع بيوحنا 16 إنه سوف يعطيكم الروح القدس لكي يكونوا شهود. Let's go to John 16, verse 8, for a second. خلينا نروح على يوحنا 16 العدد الثامن للحظة. In verse in verse 7, actually, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that the Helper comes. Um, if I go, I will send him to you. But when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. And concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. أما على خطية فلأنهم لا يؤمنون نبي وأما على بر فلأني ذاهب إلى أبي ولا ترونني أيضا وأما على دينونة فلأن رئيس هذا العالم قدين. So here we see the purpose of the giving of the Spirit is for testimony and conviction of the world. هنا نرى الهدف وراء عطاء الروح القدس للتلاميذ أن يكون عندهم شهادة ولكي ما هذا الروح القدس يبكت العالم ويقنع العالم. I'm beginning to answer the question: How do I know what I know is true? بلشت جواب على السؤال كيف أعرف أن ما أعرفه هو صحيح. It will be the Holy Spirit that will convict people as you give testimony. فالروح القدس هو الذي يقنع الناس إذ نحن أو أنتم تشهدون للمسيح. Notice he breathes on them. لاحظوا هو نفخ عليهم. He says, "Receive the Holy Spirit." ألون إقبل الروح القدس. This is very similar to the creation where he breathed life. Into man and woman. هو شبيه بالخلق عندما خلق آدم وحواء وبعدين نفخ فيهم الحياة روح الحياة نسمة الحياة. This is one of the creation motifs in the book of John. هيدي إحدى ال ال الأماكن يلي يعود فيها إلى حدث القيامة بيوحنا. Remember in the beginning, in the beginning of the book of John, it cites Genesis chapter one. تذكروا إنه بأول إنجيل يوحنا بي بيعود أو بيقتبس أو بيرجع ل لتكوين الصحيح الأول الخلق. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word was with God and the word was God. في البدء كان الكلمة وكان الكلمة عند الله وكان الكلمة الله. And all things that came into being came into being through Him. وكل الأشياء التي كانت كانت به. And so now He is giving back again spiritual life. 
to his disciples and future believers. فهنا في هذا المكان عمل يحتي القوة الروحية أو الحياة الروحية لتلاميذ والمؤمنين به. In this sense, he is breathing on them the Holy Spirit. فهو ينفخ عليهم الروح القدس. He says in verse 23, if you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins, their sins are have been retained. بيقول لهم العدد 23 من غفرتم خطاياه تغفر له ومن أمسكتم خطاياه أمسكه. And so they are to testify about Jesus Christ. إذن عليهم أن يشهدوا عن يسوع المسيح. And in the testimony, the sins of those who believe will be forgiven. وفي خلال هذه الشهادة إن خطايا الذين آمنوا أو يؤمنون بالمسيح تكون مغفورة. But we come to scene four. وهلا بنوصل للمشهد الرابع. And Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. توما أحد الاثنى عشر ما كان معهم عندما أتى يسوع. And they tell Thomas, we have seen the Lord. وبقولوا لتوما نحنا قد رأينا الرب. But Thomas says, unless I see in his hands the imprints of the nails and I put my fingers in his sides, I will not believe. بقولهم إن لم أبصر في يديه أثر المسامير وأضع إصبعي في أثر المسامير وأضع يدي في جنبه لا أؤمن. Now let me ask you a question, and you can answer this in your mind. Was Thomas a believer? خليني أسألكن سؤال وبتجاوب على السؤال كل واحد بذهنه هل كان توما مؤمنا? He says, unless I see his hands and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. ألون إذا إلا إذا كان أنا رأيت وضعت يدي في أسر المسامير وفي في جنبه لا أؤمن. We have that answer. In John chapter thirteen, نحنا عنا الجواب على هيدا السؤال بيوحنا والصحاح ثلاثة. This is where Jesus is washing the disciples' feet. هنا يسوع يغسل أرجل التلاميذ. He comes to Peter and Peter says, "You will never wash my feet." ما تقول عن بطرس بقول له بطرس أنت لن تغسل رجلي أبدا. Jesus says, "Okay." بقول له يسوع. If I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. قال له يسوع إذا كنت أنا لا لم أغسل رجليك ليس لك في نصيب أو معي نصيب. Peter says, wash my head and my hands and my feet. قال له مساعدة بطرس رأسي ودي وجري غسلهم كلهم. And Jesus is probably laughing at Peter and saying, you don't need to wash your whole body. أوه على اللحظة هيدي يمكن حتى يسوع عم يضحك عليه لبطرس بقول له مش أنت مش محتاج نغسل لك كل جسمك. You are completely clean. لأنك أنت نظيف. You only need to wash your feet. أنت بتحتاج فقط أن تغسل رجليك. But one of you is not. لكن أحدكم ليس. For he knew who was going to betray him, Judas. لأنه عرف مسلمه. From this passage, this is the Passover night. We see that Jesus. Is restoring them because they've been arguing about who is the greatest in the kingdom. من شوف بهيدا المقطع يلي هو مقطع ليلة الفصح يسوع عمل يجرب إنه يرجع يعيدهم إلى إلى شركة مع بعضهم البعض لأنهم كانوا عمل يتخانقوا على من هو الأعظم بينهم. So he is forgiving their sins and restoring the fellowship among each other. Okay, so هو عم بي عم بي يغفر خطاياهم وبزات الوقت عم بعيدهم إلى الشركة مع بعضهم البعض. But according to this passage, they are believers. They don't need to be saved again. ولكن بحسب هذا المقطع هم مؤمنين إن مش محتاجين تيرجعوا يتخلصوا من جديد. It's a metaphor or symbol for salvation. They don't need to take a bath again. آه هيدا طبعا صورة عن الخلاص مش محتاجين يرجعوا يستحموا مرة جديدة. They only need to wash their feet. لكن هم فقط يحتاجون إلى غسل أرجلهم. But there's one of them who is not a believer. لكن واحد منهم لم يكن مؤمنا. He needs to take the bath. هذا يحتاج إلى ال ال إنه يتحمم. But he would betray Jesus. لكنه سوف يسلم يسوع. So if Thomas is a believer in chapter thirteen. فإذا كان توما مؤمنا بالصحة الطاش. What does it mean when Peter says or when Thomas says, "I will not believe unless I put my hands in his hands and my hands in his side"? ماذا يعني كلام توما عندما قال للتلاميذ أنا لا أؤمن إلا إذا وضعت يدي في أثر المسامير في يده وفي جنبه. So we return back to the story. إذا نعود إلى قصتنا. In John chapter twenty. بيوحنا عشرين. 
He says, unless I put my hands in the imprint of his nails and my finger in the place of the nails and put my hand inside his hand, I will, inside his side, I will not believe. In lam obsir fi yadayhi athar al-masamir wa ada asba'i fi athar al-masamir wa ada yadi fi jambihi, la u'min. Eight days later. Ba'ad t'men t'yem. The disciples are in the room and Thomas is in there with them. The doors are shut and Jesus says, Peace be with you. He immediately goes to Thomas and he says, Thomas, put your hands on my hands. Put your hands on in my sides. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answers and says, My Lord and my God. Jesus responds, Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who do not see and believe. Now, Thomas is a believer. So what is it that he is not believing? If you remember earlier, the disciples looked into the tomb, went into the tomb, and saw the wrappings lying there. And it also says, they believed. And the text says exactly what they believed in. In 20 verses 8 and 9. So the other disciple who had first come into the tomb then entered. He saw and he believed. But we know that John and Peter are believers already from John 13. But verse 9 tells us what they had believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. You see, they did not fully understand the bodily resurrection of Jesus. This is what Thomas does not believe. He believes in the person and the work of the Messiah, Jesus, that he can save him from his sins. But he doesn't quite understand the bodily resurrection. This is the problem of the Sadducees. The Sadducees don't believe in a bodily resurrection. Thomas is having his Sadducee moment. So before he does not see the bodily resurrection of Jesus, he does not believe in the bodily resurrection. So before he sees Jesus in the blood of the blood, he does not believe that Jesus is but now he believes in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Now I'm going to give you two terms. One is certain faith. And the other is confident faith. Thomas has certain faith after he sees the bodily resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> certain faith is an oxymoron. It really doesn't make sense. <laughs> because if you have certain faith, then you don't have faith. You have certainty. <laughs> So, faith is something that we believe in, though we cannot see it. 
So the 12, here the 11 apostles have certain faith in the bodily resurrection of Jesus, including Mary. They have seen Jesus in his baptism, in his earthly three years ministry on earth, and now they've seen him uh, died, uh, crucified, buried, and resurrected again in a bodily resurrection. They are eyewitnesses to the resurrection. Without their eyewitness testimony, we cannot have confident faith. The number one job of the apostles is to have walked with Jesus and to have seen them, seen him with their own eyes and to have seen him crucified buried and resurrected with their own eyes. Remember when they choose the 12th apostle in the book of Acts chapter 1. Uh, sorry, the prerequisite was that he had to have been at the baptism to the resurrection. Without their certain faith, we cannot have confident faith. Let me give you an example. Back to my illustration on the juror. So I am one of 12 jurors on a murder case. There were two eyewitnesses to the murder. And there was evidence. Uh, and the the lawyers questioned the eyewitnesses. And their testimony appeared to be reliable and consistent. One eyewitness gave his testimony, another eyewitness gave his testimony, and they were equal in testimony. The witnesses were reliable. Even though I did not see the murder, I could give a decision beyond a reasonable doubt based on the eyewitness testimony of these two people. The same situation is exactly here with Thomas. Thomas says, I'm not going to believe unless I see with my own eyes. The other ten disciples have said, we've seen Jesus, we've seen his bodily resurrection. Thomas says, I'm not going to believe unless I see with my own eyes. So Jesus appears to him and he sees Jesus and he puts his hands in his nail scarred hands and his Sides. He says, My Lord and my God. But Jesus says to him, More blessed are those who do not see and believe. Where 
We have not seen the bodily resurrection of Jesus. نحن لم نرى قيامة يسوع في الجسد. But we believe. ولكن نحن نؤمن. We are more blessed because we have faith, this confident faith. نحن عنا الطوبة الأكثر لأنه عنا هذا الإيمان الواثق. Based on the eyewitness testimony of the twelve disciples. بناء على الشهادة العيان للرسل الطناش. Their witness is reliable. شهادتهم يمكن الوثوق لها. John, in this book, wrote his testimony about seeing Jesus and his bodily resurrection. يوحنا كتب هذا الكتاب لأنه كان قد رأى قيامة يسوع في الجسد. Matthew wrote his testimony about the bodily resurrection. متى كتب شهادته عن قيامة يسوع بالجسد. Mark wrote his testimony through probably Peter about the resurrection. مرقس كتب شهادته على الأرجح من خلال بطرس عن قيامة يسوع المسيح في الجسد. And then Luke did the research and collected the evidence and interviewed Mary and the disciples and gave his testimony about. The testimony of the witnesses of the resurrection. Luke عمل بحث وعمل توجه بأسئلة لمريم ولا ولا التلاميذ الآخرين ربما أكثر لحتى جمع كل المعلومات وأعطى أيضا شهادته وشهادتهم عن قيامة يسوع المسيح في الجسد. We believe today because of these twelve men who were eyewitnesses of Jesus's life on earth and his crucifixion. Burial and resurrection. إذا نحن نؤمن اليوم بسبب شهادة هؤلاء الشهود العيان عن خدمة يسوع المسيح على الأرض على على صلبه على الصليب ودفنه وقيامته. Our faith is not a faith based on just anything. It's based on fact. إذا إيماننا مش إيمان هيك مش مبني على شيء ولكن مبني على الحقائق الوقائع. So we have. Confident faith. إذا عندنا إيمان واثق. Now this applies to not just our salvation. هذا ما بيطبق فقط على موضوع خلاصنا. So if you are not a believer and you are looking into Christ, if He is the true God and Messiah. إذا كنت أنت غير مؤمن وعملت فتش على مين هو الإله الحقيقي ومن هو المسيح. We have the gospel records of the eyewitness testimony of the disciples. عندنا سجل شهادة التلاميذ يلي كانوا شهود عيان لحياة يسوع وقيامته. I challenge you to read the book of John and to believe. أنا متحدينا إنه تحدك تقرا يوحنا إنجيل يوحنا وتؤمن. And if you are a believer, إذا كنت مؤمن, you also can practice confident faith. Sometimes we can't control everything around us. Even in this uh, coronavirus that's going around. We can take as many precautions as possible, which we should. الاحتياطات اللازمة وعلينا أن نأخذ جميع الاحتياطات. But we still need to live by faith, confident faith. ولكن علينا أن نحيا بإيمان إيمان واثق. That God will protect us and heal us and restore us if necessary. أن الرب سوف يحمينا وسوف يشفينا ويعيدنا إذا كان هذا ضروري. We do not live in fear, but we live in Faith, confident faith. نحن لا نحيا بالخوف ولكن نحيا بالإيمان الواثق. Look at what it says in verse thirty. شوف شو بقول بالعدد الثلاثين. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. وآيات أخرى كثيرة صنع يسوع قدام تلاميذه لم تكتب في هذا الكتاب. Now. Some people say this is a hyperbole, an exaggeration. بعض الأشخاص بقول إنه هاي دي مبالغة. Because we probably could write all the signs that Jesus did in his three years on earth. لأنه ممكن واحد يكتب كل العجائب أو الآيات اللي عملها يسوع خلال ثلاث سنوات على الأرض. But when Jesus breathed his spirit into the believers. لكن عندما نفخ الرب الروح القدس إلى على المؤمنين. He says. I sent you as the Father has sent me. And they are to be 
testimonies of, but of what God is doing in their lives. وكان عليهم أن يشهدوا عما عمل أو يعمل يسوع في حياتهم. So we are not going to do the miracles that Jesus did. نحن ما رح نعمل العجائب اللي عملها يسوع. But the Holy Spirit is in us convicting the world of sin and righteousness. لكن الروح القدس موجود فينا وهو يبكت العالم على خطية وعلى بر وعلى دينونة. If you count all the signs that the Holy Spirit is doing in the believers, the twelve, and the church, and even today, there are not enough books in the world to write what Jesus is doing. إذا كنتوا بتكتبوا أو بتاخذوا كل الآيات العجائب يلي عم عملها الرب من خلال حياة يسوع والتلاميذ والكنيسة اليوم لن يكون هناك متسع من الكتب لكتابتها. As you give your testimony about what Jesus is doing in your life, the Holy Spirit is convicting the other person of sin and righteousness as you speak. ولكن عندما تعطي او تشهد الاخرين عما عملوا الرب في حياتك في حياتك عندها الروح القدس يبكت السامع على خطيه وعلى بر. In other words, the Holy Spirit is preserving the true testimony in the gospels. بطريقه اخرى الروح القدس يحافظ على هذه الشهاده المتعلقه بالانجيل في الاناجيل and he's preserved the, the gospel truth and testimony until today وهو يحافظ على هذه الشهاده حتى ايامنا الحاضره and god when you speak the holy spirit is testifying through you as you give testimony وعندما انت تتكلم تتكلمين الرب الروح القدس يتكلم من خلالكم عندما تشهد. So you are one of these signs that weren't able to be written in a book. أنت أحد هذه الآيات التي لم يكن بالإمكان كتابتها في هذا الكتاب. But in verse 31, these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you might have life in His name. وأما هذه بالعدد 31 فقد كتبت لتؤمنوا أن يسوع هو المسيح ابن الله. ولكي تكون لكم إذا آمنتم حياة باسمه. The application I've already given is to go. Jesus says, I send you as the Father has sent me. إذا التطبيق أوريدي حتكون إياه إنه علينا أن نذهب إلى هذا العالم كما أرسلنا يسوع، كما أرسل الآب هو أيضا يرسلنا إلى هذا العالم. So I pray each of you will go into your areas of influence and give testimony. Of our great uh, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. فعلينا نذهب كل واحد منا إلى المكان يلي الرب وضعه فيه والأشخاص اللي بيأثر عليهم ويشهد لهم عن ما فعل الرب يسوع المسيح مخلصنا في حياتنا. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.